That is gross. Spider. Oh, hey, Bat Jack JW. Uh, Saturday morning. Thanks for tuning in, and it's a brand new year, isn't it? So, um, but yeah, since we last talked uh, in the JW's radio, we were talking about the looking back at 2016. I did a little bit of that. Um, also, you saw the video. Uh, just kind of a quick little video of my friend and myself just kind of talking about some stuff and looking back and uh, he um, he has helped out with the channel uh, here and there definitely he's been involved uh, some of you that go kind of far back with me uh, or may just popped up and seen the video or something he's been in the videos here and there in fact he was actually on one of these JW's radios one of the early episodes but uh, before we get to yakking too much I gotta have some coffee right that is good and this is actually a cup from uh, one of the um, the viewers and I appreciate it it's got a picture of me on there and um, Bat Jack JW and everything on there, so really cool. Thanks for sending this. I use it every day. <laughs> All right, I got my uh, uh, Rough Rider uh, work fold out here. Figure we'd talk about that. I've been, you guys, remember when I did the video on uh, having this thing? I've been using it a lot. Um, All right, so. Uh, let's get to some shout outs here all right and uh, we have the gun enthusiast um, he's been doing some videos on his ranger his uh, um, his puppy there that he's got and doing a really good job of like I like the fact that he did choose to vlog about that because it we it's really kind of neat to see the growth of a of an animal like that like his, his fine dogs that he's got um, Varen Varen K and we have 904 Outdoors. They uh, wished us a Merry Christmas and to all of you, right? Hope you had a good one. And hopefully you didn't eat <laughs> party hardy too much on New Year's Eve. Um, all right. <clears throat> Glock 17, Mr. Holster and Joe P, Lion Quest Fitness, Arizona Ghost Riders. If you definitely are into the cowboy stuff, uh, history and all that, check him out. Also, um, Lion Quest Fitness has been doing some pretty good stuff. It's nice to see that his channel is coming along really great. Um, we all know Mr. Holster, right? <laughs> PR veteran and Russ Elder. Prepping for Zombies. Prepping for Zombies is actually a channel that has been subscribed to me, and I've been subscribed to him since I began YouTube, really. Uh, he's a good old boy from Tennessee, and he loves revolvers as well. He does some really good stuff. I like his content. His content is... Uh, I like his channel because it's kind of like a, you never know what he's going to post. Uh, he, he's just kind of like, wow, you know, just it's like you never know what he's going to do. He may be going out and battling zombies. You never know. So really good guy, really good channel. Uh, Edward Petty, Bob Hartman, and I Carry One. I Carry One is another uh, great channel. He's always got uh, good content coming out, uh, really informative stuff as well. Gunfighter 45 ACP. Yeah, my favorite caliber, <laughs> Panama Brad, Ed USAF, Ed is always a good man, he's um, supporting my channel for a long time, uh, 454 Packer, Scott F, Orange Pitbull, Wheel Gun Fanboy, they like that guy already, uh, Chris Baker, and EB Saint, alright, so that's, uh, man, the list is getting longer, isn't it? <laughs> um, I'd like to take this moment and thank um, Lion Quest Fitness for something. Uh, Lion Quest Fitness informed me of, if you guys remember, uh, there was a moment there about a month ago. It was uh, in uh, November during Thanksgiving of all times. So, well, yeah, thanks, guy. Um, this culprit had uh, abducted some of my videos um, and reposted them onto his fraudulent channel and. Um, I don't know, trying to impersonate my channel or whatever. I think you all know who the real Bat Jack JW is. We don't need to get into that. But um, he's Mr. Whatever. His name changes quite often. He's back at it again. And uh, he lifted another, basically the same set of videos. I don't know what his problem is. But uh, it was thanks to Lion Quest Fitness that um, brought that to my attention. I brought it to YouTube's attention. The, hey, big round of applause for YouTube. Took him down within the first day. Um, 
really cool to see that kind of support. And uh, really what this whole, it's almost like I really, um, uh, it's just, it doesn't really bother me as much as it did the first time because the first time was really a shocker. It was like, wow, what, what, I didn't quite understand it. Um, but as I dove more into it, you know, it happens a lot on YouTube. It's almost like a backhanded compliment. It, it's like, man, somebody really thinks that uh, my content is worth trying to, you know, rip off and reproduce. Um, it, it's okay, cool. <laughs> but really what was awesome about this whole thing was you guys um, the amount of just support that I got from you guys when I posted that video um, early in uh, November or late November I'm sorry late November and I talked about it man you guys were just like the the Batjack JW posse mounted up and went after them and just yeah I, that was cool that was really cool to see excuse me that kind of support for my channel and for me that so I thank you and, you know, guys like Lion Quest Fitness, you know, looking out for me and sending me a message saying, hey, you know, the, this guy's doing this. And it's really neat to, to see that if somebody does this to my stuff and uh, I guess I've, I've gotten around YouTube quite a bit that I have enough uh, followers here that are able to spot it and go, hey, that's not yours and report back to me. And that's really neat to, to see that. That's so I, I thank each and every one of you. That's really cool. And uh, Lion Quest Fitness, thank you, man. That you're, that's really awesome of you to, to have done that for me. So, all right, enough of that. Who cares? Um, <laughs> we, um, for Christmas morning, unboxed the Colt 1911. Uh, it's one of my favorites. Uh, I think <laughs> there was a lot of, I think some people thought that maybe I got that for Christmas. I actually had that for a long time. In fact, that was the very first shooting video I ever did on this channel. Uh, we unboxed it on video and kind of paid homage to, uh, of course, uh, Hickok 45 because he was the reason I did that. I did a couple of uh, Hickok 45 kind of routine bits with that, with that gun was because if it wasn't for old Hickok 45, I would never have known that gun existed. Uh, once I saw his video early on, long before I did YouTube, I was watching his stuff and watching his uh, video on it and I just thought wow what a gun look at that thing I got I just you know and thinking to myself at that time like that was that was something out of reach I'm like you know that was when I was really early into guns and I just thought when I heard that name Colt I said man that's probably that's just way out of my price range I mean there's and it, they are pricey I'm not gonna lie I'm, I'm not rich or anything but um but yeah, that was like, oh, so uh, as I dove further into it, I was searching. But yeah, that was why I kind of did those videos um, with kind of paying that, that ticket to Hickok 45 was because if it wasn't for him, I really wouldn't have known anything about it. And I've watched his videos drooling over it myself, um, really wanting it because uh, that's just the traditionalist in me. I just had to have that. It's like, what better than a reproduction World War One 1911 that you can fire today? <laughs> well, I mean, you can still fire the old one. I have done that, by the way. You remember that video? Have you seen that video? <laughs> um, but yeah, that was, yeah, it, uh, the story goes, I did a story of a gun on that video, on that gun um, video. Uh, it, uh, I looked for that gun for like three years, no joke. I even, I called Colt the, directly to their company so many times, I'm sure they, they got tired of hearing it from me. Um, and I finally got a straight answer from one of them and they told me something like uh, it was, one of like 4,000 of them or something. They didn't make very many. And it was, uh, I was really late to the game because by the time I was looking for it, that gun was already released for some years. Uh, I think it came out in 2009. Now it gets confusing because it gets crossed between that other one that they produce called the anniversary gun. I call it the happy birthday gun. I've said that before in video. Uh, the I think it's called the tier three. There's three editions. There's a, there are two are like gold, gold plated and everything, which I don't really have much interest in those, because um, I like to be able to take it out and shoot it. Uh, which we have something here that I'll talk about that. Um, but uh, uh, the tier three is like similar to it. It's it 
it's basically the same gun, but what has changed is the markings on it. The markings have a different uh, roll marks on the slide. The frame still says the United States property or property U.S. Army, something like that. Uh, but uh, it, they changed the markings on the slide. Now, the one that I have is the exact markings from the war, from the United States government, where they marked them for the military, and that is what I wanted. That's what, you know, so that, that's what the difference is between the Tier 3 anniversary gun and that gun that you saw there on Christmas. So... Three years into looking for it, I was wandering into a friend of mine's shop. Um, unfortunately, he's no longer around, but I was kind of wandering in there, checking it out. I always used to pop my head in there just to check out what the what the boys are doing, right? Um, but uh, yeah, he, I was looking at a Springfield Armory loaded uh, stainless steel, which I'm still that's like still on my list. I mean, I think I yeah, I liked it best when I carry one. I call him Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I carry one, uh, said it the best. He said, 1911s are like crack. It's an addiction. You just got to keep buying them. And he is so right. And I remember when I first bought my very first 1911, which I no longer have. In fact, uh, my friend that you saw in that video, um, he Cody, he's the one that actually has it now. I sold it to him. But uh, I remember being told, it ain't going to be your last one. I mark my words, and boy, was that true! I, I tell you, I've 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 owned a, a lot of them, and I've sold cut some of them. I've sold a few of them here and there, and I just learned that I don't want to sell anymore. I just learned I don't want to sell any more of them. I want to keep them, and I want to continue collecting. So there's still going to be more to buy in the future. Um, but <laughs> what are we talking about here? Anyways, I was in my friend's shop, and I was uh, horsing around with the uh, looking at this. Uh, Springfield Armory 1911 and now mind you they had no idea that I was really looking for this gun uh, so uh, my friend there he said hang on I got something in the back I'm gonna show you after you're done looking at this I said well here here's the back let me see what you got in the back <laughs> you know here here's the gun back I'm gonna see what you got in the back for me so he went back and he got this uh, just giant it was like no joke it's just like big cardboard box and I was like oh okay so he opened that up pulled out this white box and um, slid out the infamous, like the iconic, eye-catching blue box with the big gold label of the Rampant Pony. This is Colt Manufacturing Company. My jaw dropped, my heart was racing. I, and he just turned the box to me, he says, I'll let you open this. I, there was so much going through my head. I did not know what to expect when I opened this up. I, for a moment there, a split second, I said, this can't be the 1911 that I, this can't be it. Um, there's no way. Opened the box and the first thing I saw was that chipboard reproduction military box and I just about fainted. Opened it up, saw the gun, uh, just about had a heart attack <laughs> and I I don't think I, I I didn't put it down I had it in my hands and I did not I just couldn't put it back in the box and hand it back to him um, now my other friend that owns the place uh, he was talking talking with a customer and I um, my friend that was showing this to me I said to him I, I can't I gotta have this thing and he says, well, you got to talk to the man. So I'm like, all right. So as soon as uh, my buddy was done with the customer, I walked over to him and he said, oh, he goes, I see you, you're already seeing it. And I said, yes. He goes, yeah. And his words were, I was actually going to put that in my collection. That's a really nice 1911. And he's not, mind you, this is not a 1911 guy. He likes them. He appreciates them. But he's, you know, but he's not like a, a complete fanatic. Um, so I said, I have to have this gun. I'm not leaving your shop without this gun. I have to have this. What? And he, you know, he um, he mentioned to me, you know, there the prices on these things on the auction were going sky up there. I said yes, I know. <laughs> said, but and he said, you know, he goes as a friend, I can't charge you those those high prices. So let me uh, let me look into it and uh, I'll figure out what I can do for you. Um, so I put put really hard for me to put it back in a box and give it back to him and leave that shop. Uh, but he called me back and he says, you know what, give me 900 bucks for it and uh, it's yours. I came up with that money in a week and a half and I just bought it, paid him and I just got it. And really cool because he, he basically 
was able to make my dream gun happen because I really was like itching, itching hard for that gun. So that's the story, uh, to rehash it a little bit. That's the story of that gun. So, <laughs> all right. All right, so you saw the, um, the revolver close-up video. Uh, we're looking at all those Smith & Wesson revolvers drooling over that stuff like I you know um, I'm a big fan of Dirty Harry uh, Dirty Harry was really uh, aside from the uh, pre-model 10 snubby six shot K-frame uh, that's another story of a gun episode don't worry I won't bore you with that um, you can go back and watch the video if you please if you would like to maybe a lot of you saw it already um, or in the past but uh, Dirty Harry was the other one that really uh, got me and I believe that was the second Smith I bought you know looking back I think it was because the first one was the model 10-5 and I think that after that I searched out for the model 29 and it's a big gun it's a hefty gun it's it's a handful it's something that you would almost go why would you you know but for me it was dirty hairy I didn't care uh, that was part of the fun was this massive revolver uh, so when I first got it it was yeah, you know, absolutely. Just fell in love with it. Couldn't, couldn't. T when wanted to take it home so bad, but in this state right now, we have to uh, do the permit process, and it takes like a couple weeks. And believe me, it's like the when you when you want something that bad, it's the longest two weeks in your life. Um, but it also makes for another thing. It's like Christmas. It's like waiting for Christmas. So every time you buy a gun, it's like waiting for Christmas. So it, it, it does suck. It's almost bittersweet, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how you would explain it. But if you're an addiction, a, a gun enthusiast, um, it makes you just, it just drags you over. It's like torture. <laughs> but uh, the cool thing is, as I started to own that gun, I realized what an awesome gun it is. I enjoy shooting 44 specials a lot. Um, because the gun is made for a magnum, you know, that big, hard-hitting magnum, uh, loading up 44 Special and playing with power factors is really awesome. As a hand loader, it's just so much fun. I can't tell you how much fun. I never had that much fun playing with hand loading ever uh, than messing with hand loads in a 44 Special. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, because the gun is, you know, because it's, like I said, it's got that magnum uh, build to it. You can crank up those 44 specials, you know, if you want a stout, you know, shot, you can put a little bit more powder in there and uh, play around with it. And that's the neat part about that. Now, if I most, I used to have a 44 special uh, snubby made by Taurus. I sold that. Uh, that I had to be careful with because I didn't want to put a hot 44 special into that gun. So I wanted to separate those and keep those uh, hot ones for the Magnum, uh, 44 Magnums. Because if I wanted to go shoot some stout loads, I could. So anyhow, uh, I since then got rid of that Taurus. Uh, another one. Man, I tell you, don't. you know what? If you guys are into guns, you're collecting guns, don't sell them. I tell you, I always, me, I was always against selling them. And, I, and every single one I sold, I wish I hadn't. <laughs> I really do. I wish I hadn't have sold it, but uh, it, that's just the way it goes. Anyway, that Model 29 is such a well-balanced gun. I just love the thing to death. I also bought, uh, made me buy three different ones. So I got the six inch barrel, the the eight, and the three. Okay, so, <laughs> but all this talk about Dirty Harry, it kind of brings us to this. And I bet you're thinking, what is it? Is it a gun that's gonna make my day with 44 Magnum? It's actually, the gun that his enemies use, and the gun in question is this beautiful uh, Colt Python. In Magnum Force, the the motorcycle cops that are going out after him here. There you go. Black, uh, black, black on black doesn't show up really well. <laughs> um, but the motorcycle cops that are going after old Dirty Harry. Uh, this is what they got a four inch configuration Colt Python which is what made me want this gun uh, other than that I really wouldn't have probably seeked one out other than the movie just, that's just me I'm just a, a movie fanatic of these old movies so um, now I shoot this gun uh, it's got some holster wear on the front and you know, it, it actually uh, the fellow I bought it from said it was it more than likely was carried by a police officer 
So these things have gotten so expensive now. Uh, back when I bought these, I have the six inch barrel as well. Uh, back when I bought them, they they were expensive. Don't get me wrong. They were you know a thousand bucks or something like that. Uh, don't get me wrong. It's not cheap, but the prices now, it's just too. too I can't believe. I, um, I know I'm gonna say this, and I know it's like it's almost sacrilegious to say it, but uh, it's three thousand dollars. The gun's not worth it. I I know. Oh, <laughs> did Batch XJW just say that? I don't think it's worth it. I, I really don't. I, for me, if anybody's paying three grand or five grand for a pistol, um, I really, I mean, I'm not going to dismiss it and say no way in, you know, the world am I going to buy that. Uh, show me, uh, you know, but my biggest thing is I don't want to pay because somebody sat there and, and hand filed and shaped the gun with by hand. Uh, in the end, does it does it shoot any better than one that costs three thousand dollars less? Uh, that's my question. You know, does it? You know, uh, when I'm coming down to that, it's like a 1911. You know, you know, you can go, you can spend, you know, a thousand bucks and get a pretty darn decent 1911. You know, twelve hundred dollars, thirteen hundred dollars, and you can get a really good 1911. Now, does you know, when you look at that and you go to a, a $5,000 1911, does it shoot that much better or are you just paying because somebody sat there and filed the, the, the everything? Um, which is, I understand that. I understand paying for somebody's time to do that. But does it make it shoot that much better? Does it make it look that much cooler? That's my question. <laughs> Not to make this section right there turn into another 1911 gun prices <laughs> video, but... Um, but yeah, same goes with this. It's a it's a cool collectible gun. If you're into collecting revolvers, you know you just it's almost like you gotta have one. But uh, with today, today's prices, I don't know. It's just a little up there. Uh, you gotta be devoted. This has gotta be something. If you, I mean, if you got a whole bunch of money, then what the heck? Who, 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 it doesn't matter. <laughs> but I don't. So until then, uh, I'll hang on to the ones I got. And the only reason I'm really, I mean, uh, is a gun enthusiast, as a collector. Um, you just gotta have one, but uh, yeah, for the prices now, I couldn't afford to sell this and then and, and buy another one. I really just couldn't, so <laughs> that's why I'm gonna keep it. Um, it led me to buying this, which I've, uh, if you guys seen the videos called Magnum Force, uh, I did two videos like that. This has popped up in those videos, and yeah, this is um, this is the holster I bought. It's getting it's getting older these days I tell you um, it's it's definitely old and um, almost falling apart <laughs> it's got some cracks and stuff in it but uh, this was I bought this off of gun broker and just had to have it it's the old classic basket weave and it was made for a python it actually does it's a safari land uh, h89 uh, GP 100 or python so I guess it, it holds both of those and yeah bought it for magnum force and it's cool because it has the the loops right here for the single the singles you know bullets i think it holds like 12 of them that always uh, sat with me even back as a kid i remember uh, at a very young age going to the airport and seeing a police officer or security guard or something he had his bullets all lined up i just thought that was the coolest thing so I always like that and you know that's the cowboy in me too um but I, I bought this as an add-on. This is from HKS Basket Weave uh, Double Pouch for the speed loaders. And um, so if you check out the Magnum Force video, I actually did, recreated the scene from Magnum Force uh, where Davis, uh, the guy, he's at the, sh the gun range. He puts the, the shells in his gun and, and shoots the target and everything. Um, <laughs> so the, my friend and I, we did that horsing around playing around it's like one of my favorite scenes and so yeah that that's magnum force uh, you can search that on the channel magnum force and uh, there's two videos that'll pop up with that <laughs> if you like that stuff like that but yeah that's dirty hairy and that that's why i have the old uh, four inch barrel the cold python and it does shoot like a dream i remember the first time i ever shot a python it was a six inch barrel i was we we're shooting it uh we we're out at my friend's range and 
man, we were shooting that, that gun at like 60 yards out there, uh, bowling pins, and knocking them over. And we were shooting, and I just couldn't believe the accuracy, the balance of the gun. It was unbelievable. And I just, that was the first time I ever shot a python. So when I got this one, I bought it with the intention to shoot it. Um, because it was, it had some holster wear on it. It obviously had been shot, so I bought it with the intention of shooting it. It's great. It's my range. Uh, if I know if you could say that, it's my range Colt Python. <laughs> um, all right. The uh, onto a knife. The Rough Rider Work Fold. Bought this off of Amazon for like I don't know, really cheap. I forget. It was like well under 20 bucks i think it was like ten dollars or something like that it could have been that cheap free shipping i think and uh this is a great knife been using it a lot um chopped a lot of stuff with it um cut a lot of stuff with it it's still holding up the blade's still good i've been using the uh sharpener that i won from uh, a giveaway from a gun enthusiasts on it and still going strong it's a great uh, little knife I've always liked the aged ivory look, so it's uh, that yellow look, really cool. Of course, uh, kind of reminds me of John Wayne's six gun. So, <laughs> anyhow, um, gonna close it out. Thanks for hanging out on JW's radio. Kind of rambling on, talking a little stories here for the brand new year, and uh, looking forward to more stuff. And um, yeah, July fourth of this year will make three years on YouTube. Can you believe that? Three years for me. Doesn't seem that long. <laughs> but, oh man, I haven't been drinking my coffee. Still warm. I'll catch you guys on another episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for um, backing up this channel and supporting it and reporting any fraudulent things that have been happening. 